Okay everybody, so today's video is going to be about grounding and how to ground properly a, an electrical panel and there's going to be a couple different things that you have to do to correctly ground the panel depending on what the situation you're dealing with is, okay? What's wrong with the situation here with this disconnect back to the electrical panel is that there's no equipment grounding conductor. We've got the uh, electrode conductor coming up from the ground rod that's out in the disconnect outside. And they have the neutral and the two hots coming back into the panel, but they forgot to pull in the equipment grounding conductor. So that's what we're gonna go over today, how to properly do that um, if you have the disconnect, because a lot of people get this wrong. Okay, in the definitions, the equipment grounding conductor, the EGC is what it's also known as, the conductive path installed to connect normally non-current carrying metal parts of equipment together and to the system grounded conductor or to the grounding electrode conductor or both. So that is what we are going to be running today because it's failed, basically failed to pass uh, inspection here in this house. So that is what I have to get running and I will show you exactly what that is. Okay, so we're here in the electrical panel, and um, I can show you right here what we are looking at. Now, the equipment grounding conductor should be coming through with the conduit that fed in the main feed conductors here. So we've got the neutral coming out there from that disconnect, and we've got the two uh, ungrounded, which are the hot feeds, right? Now, the next thing we need to do is go back to 250 for grounding in the National Electrical Code, and we need to find the code that gives me the installation size. I need to know what size this equipment grounding conductor needs to be, the minimum, because I, you know, I don't need to buy anything that's bigger than what I need because then I'm just wasting money. So you can find that on 250.122 in the National Electrical Code and this is going to be the sizing of equipment grounding conductors and basically the way that this is sized is off of the amperage so this will be sized off of the amperage of the service and you can see here we're a 100 amp service so the maximum size uh, grounding conductor we need is a number 8 and that's exactly what we're going to use Okay guys, so I ended up actually going out to the van and I realized what I actually have is a number six ground here, uh, not a number eight. So I'm one size bigger and that's okay. Um, I'm not going to run down and grab any more because I've already had this. And uh, you know, one size bigger is just that much better for it and that's going to work. So that's what we're going to use here. So what we have here is the bond and how you can see that this one actually bonds is by that green screw which you know they didn't even screw that down so 250.28 in the National Electrical Code tells us the requirements for bonding jumpers so we want to know about that the bonding jumpers and we also want to know about the equipment grounding conductor but first off it says for the bonding jumper that you can use a wire bus screw or similar suitable conductor so most of these disconnects and the electrical panels will already come with the bonding jumper and that is what I took out of the electrical panel because in this situation I actually do not need it because we are not going to bond the neutral and the ground together because it's considered a sub panel but out inside of the disconnect there should be one of these that uh, jumps everything together so that's what we have for the bonding jumper and those are now I'll also go over the grounding electrode conductor this is what the conductor that is going to come off of the ground rod or whatever is being used as that electrode and we can see in the code here a lot of people do not know this but 
If you are using, and this is a uh, code 250, 250.66 in the National Electrical Code, and it tells you in A that if you are using connecting the electrode conductor to a rod, a pipe, a plate electrode, then you, uh, the requirement is, is that the grounding electrode conductor is, shall not be required to be larger than a six gauge copper. So basically you don't have to go bigger than a six gauge. But if you do want to size it on this, this would be the chart you would use to size your grounding electrode conductor. Okay? And basically on this service here, we are using a two or smaller or actually one on we've got uh, yeah we got two aluminum in this house for the 100 amp service so we're only required to use uh, a number eight we don't have to go any bigger than that and that's already installed so we don't have to actually worry about that but I just wanted to go over that for people that maybe are also trying to do that part as well just so you have an understanding of that now, as I showed you earlier, that equipment bonding conductor will usually jump. It will usually be screwed in to the back of this panel, and then you can turn it up and land it into one of these screws on the neutral ground bar, whatever they would consider the one that's already built into the panel. And that would be the equipment bond to bond everything together. Just to make this clear, any panel after the first overcurrent device is considered a sub-panel. So this panel right here is considered a sub-panel now, and any panel that's considered a sub-panel is going to have to be grounded this way. What we've done is we've installed this other bus right here, this other grounding bar, to the panel, and the neutral and those grounds are not going to connect together. So once we run in this equipment grounding conductor back through this conduit and get it into this panel, it's going to land straight to this ground bar, and that is it. So it's only going to bond with this casing of this electrical panel. It will not bond together with the neutral bar. So that's what you have to understand. Whenever you have a disconnect that you've run in or a sub-panel where you would run another panel off of a panel, you're always going to keep the grounds and the neutrals separate. Please make sure you shut off any live electrical before you work on it. Okay, so there we go everybody. You can see the... This is a number six, but remember we went through the electrical code and it only needed to be a number eight maximum sized equipment grounding conductor according to the code for a 100 amp service. But I only had the number six there, so we ended up getting that run in here. And I've got it landed, and as you can see, like I said earlier, we are not bonded together with the neutral bar, as you would typically do on most services that are back-to-back, -back, where this 100 amp breaker is the first main in the system. But because our first main is outside at the disconnect, this is considered a sub-panel, and we do not want to bond the equipment, the uh, casing of the electrical panel, and the grounds, equipment grounds, to the neutrals. So that's what we've essentially done here. And we finally got the last equipment uh, grounding conductor in from outside. Now we just gotta go outside there and land it. Guys, make sure you shut your stuff down here. I've turned the breaker off. This one is still in the on position, but I've turned it off outside at the main. So all these wires here are dead right now. Um, the only thing that's live out here for me is the one coming from the uh, electrical meter so so guys ultimately i did end up having to pull the meter out so i could redo some of these wires because in these disconnects it's just everything's really tight kind of hard to get in there so it was much safer to pull that so this line side here is going to be off and uh, i could do everything properly but uh, we've basically got everything landed now on the ground bar up here and the final last thing here that we need to do tighten the green screw because remember as we were first reading here in the National Electrical Code if you remember a green screw is one of the things that is a uh, requirement that is okay to use as a uh, bonding jumper so 
That is the bonding jumper here that's going to bond the casing, the neutral, and the ground together um, right here at this disconnect creating the bullseye point. The return path of current for everything on the grounds and the neutrals so that they have one spot here to return to. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to tighten this down here. So there we go guys. Everything connected. Everything checked out. Power is back on. We're wrapped up with this one now. On to the next one. So just got back to the shop here. Got the invoices and everything completed while I was waiting on my camera to recharge so I could make this last little video. Got the job wrapped up. Everything went good. And, uh, you know, I had to do other stuff on that job as well. A bunch of outlets in the house weren't working. You know, I ended up having to get in the attic and pull some wiring and found some cut wiring in the garage that was attached and ungrounded outlets and, you know, just other small things that had to be repaired. But uh, I'm glad I could put this video together. But that is the process to do it and to do it correctly. So if you've got any more questions uh, about you know anything in that process, go ahead and put you some comments in there and I'll try to get to those or just any comments that you have about the video. So thanks for watching.